هذا الحالي اي نعم هذا الحالي اي نعم اللي عليها وهذا التوسعه مع المدخل وكذلك هذا التوسعه الكبرى اللي بالقبله بالقبله وهذا الجديد كتلة هذه والكتلة هذه والكتلة الشمالية دي. A scholar from Jordan sent a message to me after he heard my uh, analysis of a hadith uh, of the Prophet والسلام, which is in the Sunnah of Abi Dawood. Uh, that the Prophet said alayhi salatu waslam umratum umranu baytul baytil maqdis kharabu yathrib kharabu yathrib khurujul malhama khurujul malhama fathul konstantiniya fathul konstantiniya khurujul dajjal that at that time when Jerusalem will be flourishing and built up at that time Medina would be in a state of destruction buildings being destroyed and in a state of forlorn destitution desolation and at that time when Medina is buildings are being destroyed and in a state of forlorn desolation at that time look for the Malhama, the Great War. So we are on the doorstep now of that Great War. Because the buildings are being destroyed in Medina. That's what the Saudis are doing. And also in Mecca. In addition to that, Medina has no status in the world today. It plays no role, none whatsoever, in the affairs of the world of Islam. None, zero, no in international affairs. It's in a state of forlorn desolation with buildings being destroyed. So we are on the doorstep of the Malhama. Perhaps within the next few months, the monstrously misguided government of Turkey. Again, so sad that I have to use this violent language. But mine has been a voice in the wilderness for too long. And the house is burning down. So someone has to speak. The monstrously misguided Turkish government, which is in the embrace of NATO and comfortable about it, comfortable about it, would be tricked or will be urged and coaxed into attack on Syria. And if Turkey attacks Syria, I have said there's going to be civil war in Turkey. And Russia will attack Turkey. And when Russia attacks Turkey, Eastern Europe, Byzantine, Eastern Europe will join with Russia. And then Muslims will support Russia against NATO to liberate Constantinople. That is the hadith of the Prophet and once there is a conflict between Russia and NATO, that's the world war. That's Malhama. That's around the corner. Hmm? And so the Saudis are doing what the Prophet has already um, prophesied with the destruction of buildings. Not only that, when the US dollar finally collapses, it's already collapsed, it's being kept alive with maybe the, what do you call it? The, uh, pump that keeps the heart pumping. <laughs> yeah. It's already finished, it died, but they kept keeping it alive. 
When the US dollar finally collapses, they are going to destroy it. They have to bring something to replace it. The US dollar is not just a US dollar today. It has functioned since 1971, or 73 rather, as the US petrodollar. And if you listen to my lecture at the RIBA conference on Islam, the petrodollar and beyond, you will understand how the US dollar became a petrodollar. The Prophet alayhi salatu waslam prophesied it. It's just our incapacity to be able to read and understand the ahadith pertaining to Akhir al-Zaman. He said that the river Euphrates will uncover a mountain of gold. What he meant by that was that a, an ocean of oil will function as a mountain of gold. When the ocean of oil functioned to back the US dollar, when King Faisal was tricked into agreeing that oil will be sold for only US dollar, which is in conflict with the Sharia. Conflict with the Sharia because Islam gives a free and a fair market. And also, not only are you violating the free market, you're violating the fair market because the US dollar is not redeemable in gold anymore. It's just paper. <laughs> That's all. As soon as Faisal was tricked into that in 1973, that oil will be sold for only US dollar, the US dollar began to fly high. Flying high. For the next 40 years, the petrodollar. And now the Zionists are bringing it down. Something has to replace it. And that is the uh, electronic and digital money controlled by the banking system. Banking system. But that new money also has to be petrol money, backed by, the, by oil. And the only way that Israel will be able to control money is if Israel will have the same relationship with Saudi Arabia that the United States had. And so we are seeing before our eyes the alliance of Saudi Arabia and Israel, the alliance of Qatar and Israel blossoming forth. Did the Prophet not say, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, that out of Najj will come the, the horns of Shaitan? The Saudi regime, the Wahhabi roots are from Naj. And so this is my response to the role playing by Saudi Arabia, which has now become one of Israel's most strategic allies in the world. It's time for the world of Islam to recognize a spade and call it a spade.